everyone welcome to the special football edition of the xander effect i'm your host xander dames i decided to go ahead and make this episode a football episode because we are almost at the end of regular football season both in college and professional and so i decided to bring back uh my friend jeremy miller who uh played ben siever in the hit adc uh, tv kit sit- sitcom growing pains and he was also the voice of Linus in the Peanuts gang. I had him come back because he's a huge football fan, both college and professional, especially in fantasy football. And he had a few things that he wanted to talk about. One of those being the fact of the matter that, well, obviously we all know that UCLA was defeated by USC in the rivalry game. But what many people are not aware of is how much USC fans actually wanted USC to lose for the purposes of getting rid of the coach. A lot of UFC USC fans are not happy with the coach that they have and they were kind of hoping for a loss so they could get rid so the administration could get rid of them that didn't happen and so far it looks like USC will be keeping their coach and that does not bring a smile to any USC fans faces including Jeremy Miller also he decided to go ahead and give a little advice because now a lot of fantasy teams are in the playoffs our league included and he had some advice for those that made it to the playoffs and also those that didn't make it to the playoffs and he also gave us a little bit of predictions for the actual NFL playoffs that are just around the corner and who he thinks might be going to the Super Bowl. Check it out. Joining me now on the Xander Effect is Mr. Jeremy Miller, a good friend of mine, a.k.a. Ben Siever from Growing Pains, a.k.a. Linus from the Peanuts Gang, a.k.a. Mr. Fantasy Football. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I think friend is pushing it a little too far. Yeah, yeah. I would have to say maybe a soft acquaintance. Soft acquaintance. That's I'll go one. with that one. <laughs> Leaves well, us both plausible deniability. <laughs> Especially after uh, UCLA's loss to USC. But we're not going to get into that. We don't have to get into that because we redeemed ourselves in your eyes and kept Helton. So don't worry about it because we're doomed to mediocrity and you get to enjoy watching the shit show. Very, very true, actually, because you guys... You guys, like, you were telling me before that you were, like, half, you know, wanting us to, wanting us to win, half wanting us to lose. I'm going to break something on your show, because you know what a huge USC fan I am. Yep, you went there. Die hard. I am actually done with USC football, because just for now, till they get committed to winning. The fact is, it is clear as day, the current head co uh, the current athletic director and the current president do not put a value on winning at a national level mm-hmm. it's clear to anyone with a brain that clay helton cannot win at the national level is he a great guy absolutely is he an amazing builder of young men absolutely would i want him coaching my kids high school team absolutely do I want him coaching an elite national program at the college level? No, because winning is necessary. Eight and four is basically about a high road with this guy. We got lucky that we were even in the discussion for the Pac-12 championship. Yeah. This is apparent to the staff and the people in charge at USC, and they decided that that's okay that we'll accept that and we're gonna keep that going. Well, that means they're not committed to winning. So until they are, 
I won't spend another single dime buying a bit of memorabilia, paying for a ticket. I will not watch another game. I will not boost their ratings. I will not do one thing that puts a penny in their pocket. They're boycotting USC. <laughs> not USC, USC football. USC football, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, they are committed to winning again. I won't give them a dime, plain and simple. I think, I think like you, I think like you, many other uh, SC football fans are feeling the same way. I have talked to a couple of people that are, that are SC football fans, and they feel the same way. They feel that they're, that SC's not at the potential that it should be, and a lot of it has to do with the staffing. The people when you look at the level of talent that exists there, and given it's only at the skill positions, the lack of foresight over the last coaches, Clay Helton included, as well as all the massively underperforming coaching hires that have come before for offensive line for everything. If we are celebrating, this is USC, mind you, what is supposed to be one of the elite programs for three years now, USC publications and USC reign of Troy and all these other great publications are pumping out joy over three star prospects committing to USC. Yeah. Not, not just, oh, you know, oh, good, we got a good, solid player. I mean, oh, we got a world beater. The world's going to change. We got somebody, everybody else went. We beat them out who? North Texas and Ohio of, you know, it's, it's not, or Miami of Ohio. Yeah, okay, yeah. USC should be competing with those schools for recruits. Really? This is an elite school. The fact, I don't care, Homer or not, the fact is nobody at the blue blood level and USC is one of the college football blue bloods should be having to scramble for recruits with second tier and third tier schools. But the fact is we're 60 something in recruiting for 2019. Wow. We're like ninth or 10th in the pack 12. That's very true. You're right about That's that. That's not going to improve under Clay Helton. And this is obvious to the staff. This is obvious to the people in charge at USC. And they decided, okay, well, that's acceptable. So until the people stop watching, I mean, attendance is already down. USC is at its lowest attendance since the late 80s when we were losing, you know, freaking seven straight to you and Terry Donahue. Um, ah, the good old days. Oh, shut up. Right? <laughs> um, but you know, it just, it is what it is. I, I, until the fans stop supporting it, the, the upper echelon won't get the hint. No. And USC is not a second tier football school. We're a second tier basketball school. And the fact that we're even sniffing the butts of other teams right now in basketball makes USC fans happy, but football that's not the case. I mean, we could, I could actually say, like, I could actually say UCLA is actually better at basketball than we're at football and against USC. And you won't get an argument here. <laughs> In fact, I mean, I'll tell you right now. Now, maybe not at the moment. Um, we've had a real good record over you guys in basketball like the last three or four years. Yeah. But, I mean, we know what you, UCLA football, or basketball is about. I yeah. mean, well, we know what UCLA football is about, too, but it's not the same class. <laughs> I am so not hearing you. I'm gonna censor this entire this entire bat UCLA bashing. Do you want to get Do you want to get back to fantasy football? Yes, actually. You know what? I, as much as I love to talk about you know uh, college football with you, um, let's talk the real football, fantasy football. <laughs> about right now, baby, it's fantasy football playoffs. And playoffs, playoffs have already started. I mean, we're talking. I mean. You know, I don't want to brag or anything. You know, yours truly is the number one seed in our league right now, which I don't know how the hell that happened, let me tell you. But, <laughs> it, but. And again, this is not criticism on your team. As I said, because of the draft situations that happened and me not get, you have a team that I, I mean, half your team is team people I would have drafted. You have a great team, but the fact is you're fourth in points in our league, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, if, if, if the league, if you have the two league. friends who were leading the league. One of them's not even in the playoffs. And that's a shocker. That's shocking. My pathetic loser 
bot filled picks team. Auto drafting team. <laughs> I'll give it, I, I, I will pat my, I made a few good moves during the year. Any, if you stay on top of your draft moves on your waiver wire, all that stuff, you can still compete. I did some good things, but the truth is I should not be in fourth place in our league. There's no way. My team is pathetic. I'm eight and five. Yeah. I, I think I have seventh in points out of our 12 guys. I mean, it's, I even, I, Jeremy, I even admitted it too. I told you earlier, I think that our mutual friend, he should be in first place based on points, oh. not record. You know, I mean, it's, as far as record is control, concerned, obviously I have the best record in the league. That's why I'm number exactly. one. And that's what Yahoo, you know, because that's what well, we use. That's, that's what the league, I mean, on. that's comparable to the NFL. I mean, look at it yeah. right now. The Bills at nine and four, are, or nine and three are in danger of possibly missing the playoffs just because of what division they're in. Yeah. So an eight and eight team from the West could possibly go to the playoffs over the bills. Mm -hmm. So it's the way the game is played. I mean, that's the truth. So it makes sense. It's applicable football, the main league and fantasy football, but Dude, if you put up almost 2,800 fantasy points in a season and you don't make the playoffs, which is what happened to our friend, that's, that's kind of frustrating. That's frustrating as it is. I mean, oh, I, dude, I know his he's salty, and he should oh, be. I would be too. Are you kidding me? I would be irritated with the situation. But as it stands, that's not the situation. Nope. The situation is you are in first. Now, I am. And, and well, here, here's, here's you the You better thing. pray that I don't make it because my luck <laughs> this year. Dude, but I don't yeah, even have to set the minute, light. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Who beat who during the regular season? Did you beat me or did I beat you? I'm sorry. What are the standings? It, I, I'm not looking at it. I'm not, I'm not I'm looking at that. Playoffs? It only takes <laughs> one week, baby. Very true, very true. And, and that's what, what I've been saying. Gonna, that's what I've been saying. It only takes one loss. Was gonna, oh. I'm – not saying my team was geared for this because I didn't get to draft them. I didn't really, but a lot of my moves lately have been geared with playoffs in mind because it looked like I might luck into this. Yeah. And I did. I backdoored my way into the playoffs. Very but nice. my team has some fairly weak matchups that it's playing if I can just make it through this week. I'm very close on points projected this week. And Honestly, the next three weeks after that, my teams are playing like the crappiest defenses. If I make it through this week, I could win the league with a freaking eight and five record in one of the worst squads I've ever seen. God, now, that would annoy me. Dude, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But I honestly think I'm going down this week just the way the matchups look. But that's what people got to look at. If you're looking at fantasy football, you've got late season injuries. You've got people who may be resting for the playoffs. If you've got teams, you know, who've been scoring high all year, they've already got it locked up, guess what? Their stars are not going to give you your fantasy points over the next few weeks because they're going to get benched. They're going to get rested because it doesn't matter if they win. So I got guys who are on shit teams pardon my French, but that's the, I mean, they're, I mean, I got, I'm, I'm, I've got guys on the Giants and on Pittsburgh. And it's, on. It's, those are tough, those are tough ones, but my, my question to you at this point, now that we're in the playoffs, now that pretty much everything is set in motion, we all need to go ahead and make stuff happen. There was, there was, there was talk within our league of one of uh, the league members saying, hey, if anybody wants to get any of my teammates, any of my, any of my players, feel free to do so. Your advice at this point for those that didn't make the playoffs, should they start trading? Should they not? Because seeing as they didn't make it, that could bring up a question of, hmm, their choices were kind of poor. Maybe if I get one of their teams, that might not work too well with mine, I might lose instead of win. What do you think I'm about not that? Real, I'm not real good with team dumping. Um, that's, that's why I like having trade review and the things we have in our league and that most review, you know, leagues have now, because at the end of the season, you got a little, you get a lot of people who give up 
and they're like, okay, well make me an offer. Well, you're going to take <laughs> crappy offers. Yeah. You don't care anymore. Well, the fact is I care. I don't, I mean, that's why you got to have the Sacco. You know, you got to. Now for us, the it's, be, it's the Drades. And <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, I've got a friend. The, the loser actually, trophy. I got a buddy who's helping me design a trophy. Oh I don't think we'll have it made this year, but by next year we will have our Drades trophy. Oh. You got to have a last pace trophy. You got to have something to give people incentive Motivation. to fight for, you know, to still keep playing through the end. Um, I don't like when teams start dumping players. Uh, I don't think it's so much of a, an issue of, well, their team didn't function well. That could just be week to week. I mean, things happen. Look at our buddy, Steve. I mean, it guy's got 2,800 points and is not in the playoffs, but if you get that one running back, who's got weak matchups, or you get that one receiver that can change a playoffs and people who are not involved anymore shouldn't be. I, I honestly believe trades should be like stopped after a certain time, especially as you get to the playoffs. But, um, you, find your, but you find yourself, you find yourself, say for example, you get into the first round of the playoffs and suddenly you have injuries. Suddenly you have players that are out. Suddenly you have things like that. Do you still believe in not, dumping or and th having that person go into waivers or whatever whatever uh whatever if, player is available at that point if you have to you have to um i just dumped the pittsburgh defense who's been doing very well for me but they have a bit of a rough matchup over the next few weeks so i was able to pick up a defense i'm not going to talk about who but i was able to pick up a defense that has two very weak mashups over these next three weeks and that will benefit me well in the playoffs that's all i care about at this point at this point that's all that matters and i can run off uh three quarterbacks a running back and i think two or three wide receivers and two defenses who all are playing bottom five teams this this week so, so you're, you're making if you're hurting, if you have an injury, if you have something else, you can fill it on the waiver wire right now with somebody who has an extremely weak matchup who may not be that great. I'll give you an example. Um, Hodges, Pittsburgh's backup. Pittsburgh, yeah. Again, they're doing nothing. But fantasy-wise, he's got an honest shot in most leagues to put up 20 points this week. Uh, most leagues, 20 points is a really good week. Now, for our league, he probably put up closer to 40 points, which, you know, is still a very good week if you're filling in with a nobody. So there are people there if you're searching the waiver wires. It's not about what they've done all year. It's about what are they doing right now and who are they playing? You know, I've got two guys playing Miami this year, or this week, who, I mean, Miami's defense is nothing. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's pretty bad. It's you pretty, know, it's pretty these bad. are not guys who normally will perform each week. But guess what? They're playing a very weak defense, so I got a good chance for them to pop. They might not. I could get screwed, but, you know, it's been working for me most of the year. So you don't have to make those trades. And the truth is, this late in the year, you're not going to get anybody really good unless it's a true player dump. And then it's not going to get approved by the people in the league. Because who in the hell is going to let you trade a top running back or a top wide receiver for junk? I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, at, at this point, even uh, the commissioner of our league also said that he might turn off trades, you know, during the playoffs just because of that I fact. Think, I think it's the best way to go. At this point, you can pick up who you need. And what would be a fair trade people of that value are available on the waiver wire just based on matchup. And it's just to keep it fair on every side, on every angle. That's exactly it. You get people, I mean, again, I'm not trying to be a, a dick, but in our league, we had somebody who tried to make a trade that looked rather suspicious. Now yep. they can claim all day long that it wasn't the case, but when everything points to that, and it's a mismatch trade, what else are the league members supposed to think? Why would we approve something like that? 
Well, we we automatically. Well, actually, I'll, I'll say it right now. We automatically thought it was they were cheating. You know, well, because it, it, it looked very cheating. suspicious. I, I won't say cheating. I won't say cheating. I'll say collusion. Collusion. Yeah, collusion. colluding. But it's not exactly cheating. It's an ethical gray area that I don't I don't like. And you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the truth is, dude. You and I. I mean, you're my boy. I may hate you, but you're my boy. <laughs> Feeling you mutual. And, you and I could have colluded all damn year long. Very true. If that was available. I mean, but we never, we, you know what, since we started this, since we started it being members of this league, you and I have never done that. You know, I like, the first yeah. of all, the ethics thing, it's just, mm-hmm. I, I operate above board. I'm sorry. That's the way I operate. Likewise. I, you do too. Um, but the fact is, it would be possible if you and I wanted to be conniving, we could stare at every matchup every week. And, dude, if you drop this guy, I'm first on waiver and I can do this and I'll trade this. And, I mean, you can do that stuff. That's why you have to have trade review. That's why you have to have all your people actually participate. Hell, even, even our commissioner, even our commissioner, I've known him since the 10th grade. You know, I could have easily, like, been colluding with him. But... Easy. Instead, he screwed me over last year, but we're not, he trade <laughs> raped me last year, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> but no, I agree with what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying that, yeah, it's just, it just keeps it all on the up and up. It keeps it all fair. And I agree with that because, um, you know, we, we gave him, we gave him shit in the chat saying, oh, you know, it's a power trip that you have and blah, 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 you know, but in reality, it's true. It just keeps everything on the up and up. And right now, that the, the, the people that I'm sure that you and I are, 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 are talking about, one of them is in the playoffs. The other one is not. So it's easy. Um, there's going to there's gonna probably – they're going to try, but here's, it's not going to happen. Here's the funny thing, which makes fantasy football so wonderful, is that the one who's in the playoffs is the one that this BS trade would have benefited. Yeah. Yeah. So you never know in fantasy, but that's the truth. I mean, this this person actually is one of the top pl- teams in our league, mm-hmm. and yet that mismatch trade that we all felt was collusion. You know, it it didn't. Even if it went through, they would have killed. But it would have made their team even better. They mm-hmm. felt the need to try and collude because they felt that one team was weak. And it still turned out through the fantasy gods of this weird season that they were dominant. Wow. And, and to be honest with you, it's, it has been a freaking crazy weird season. Like, I, we've talked about that so many times. It's been insane. I mean, there's been almost no rhyme or reason to the season. And I was going to say, pardon me, I've been sick, so I'm having to sip on my tea quite a lot. But, no worries. Um, Honestly, there's been very little you've been able to predict about this season. I mean, truthfully, look at it. The defenses, the ones you thought were really going to perform, maybe a little more mediocre. They Chicago. Haven't dropped- Chicago, is, Chicago is known to be the top defense, and they haven't, look at it, man. you know. Everything we thought about this season has gone a little haywire, which has made it really interesting. It's one of the things I love about fantasy football. You no. never know what's going to happen. Um this has been one of those years. Uh, again, we you thought it was the curse. I just thought Mahomes wasn't worth <laughs> drafting. The history. Madden game curse. The Madden 20 game curse. <laughs> but the fact is, you've got top performers who've either been injured or have underperformed most of the year. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at an offense like um, Atlanta. Atlanta, I mean, this is a team that – in their sleep, puts up 4,000 passing yards, two or three 1,000 one year, you know, uh, 1, yard receivers, and they've been middle of the pack at best this year. Mm-hmm. It's been that kind of year. The teams you expected to do it kind of threw you for a loop, so you've had to adjust. That's what you and I have been talking about all year. I this mean, has been the year of – Adjustments, <laughs> but you know, adjustments, drops and pickups and watching the waiver wires. And like I said, right now, playoff time, this is the time to look at your matchups, man. If you're looking at your standard scoring unit, a standard solid week for quarterbacks, what 18 points. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
you got multiple guys who barely put up 15 a game all year who could probably put up 20 plus this week just based on matchup. So if you're feeling a little weak, take a risk. You got guys that are available. Look at the matchup next week as well, though. You don't want to pick up a guy who's got, you know, Miami defense on his, on his calendar this week and then plays Baltimore defense next week. That might throw you for a bit of a loop. But there's a lot of guys who have a fairly soft schedule the rest of the, um, the, rest of the year that maybe didn't perform as well earlier in the season. Not to mention the fact of the matter, and we've talked about this before as well, is that a lot of teams getting closer to the actual playoffs, to the actual NFL playoffs, are going to rest a lot of their top players and not play them as hard or as much in order to keep them fresh for playoff time. Over the next four weeks, you're going to see a lot of top teams start resting the stars. And we've already seen um, New Orleans clinch. Um, they're going to start resting guys. I mean, if you're riding Drew, he's going to be playing maybe a half after next week. True. So you might want to reconsider. Those are things you've got to take into account. Guys you've ridden all year, once they get it locked up, why is their team going to risk them getting injured? I actually kind of saw uh, something similar happen this past week on Monday Night Football, that they were resting a lot of their top players uh, during the game because they didn't want them like, you know, a player that would actually play all four quarters as a running back. They rested them every so often, something that they weren't doing in regular season. But now they're like resting them more. They're playing them less and less, their top players. And that's yeah. something that's going to be happening. Anybody who's got a chance at making the playoffs or has it pretty well wrapped up is going to be thinking about saving their players' legs and you know reducing the wear and tear on. Yeah, because yeah. because because on my team I had for my running back I had Car uh, uh, Carson with the, with uh, the Seahawks. Yeah. And they were resting them. They were, they kept on like they kept on resting them and putting in Penny. And I'm like, stop putting in Penny, I need points, you know? Even though I was winning anyway, I still wanted more points. And they kept on switching them out for Penny. And I'm like, like every other, every other, I think it was like every other five minutes or something like that within the quarter, they were bringing in Penny and giving him some playing time and resting Carson. And I'm like, this is, this is great. This is, this is driving me freaking nuts. I know it was driving you nuts, but I mean, the Seahawks are extremely lucky to have somebody like Penny. Penny could be, you know, starting on at least 10 other teams in the league and having a backup like him where they can rest a Carson and let him, you know, rest his legs. We all know Seattle's going to make the playoffs at this point. You know, over the next four weeks, he is not going to be getting the workload. Doesn't mean he can't put up points for you, but when you got somebody who's close, who maybe has a better matchup, who are you going to start in your playoffs? Of course. Of course. And, and the other thing, too, what do, you, what do you think of teams that are not making the playoffs, that are, that are pretty much they're, they're out, and their players, like fantasy owners that have those players on their roster right now, what do you think they should do at that point with, the, with these players? First of all, you need to be fighting for every spot you get. I'm sorry, fantasy football is about ego. Okay, it's about bragging rights. Very so true. you need that one more spot in your league. You need to climb every spot you can. That's what helps the integrity of the leagues. Pardon me. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of some of the bigger sports sites. I won't name names. I don't want to get in trouble. But some of the bigger sports sites free fantasy football teams. Because by the time you get halfway through the season, most of these people aren't playing anymore because they're losing. So you have players who are rostered who will never be helpful to anybody. You have people doing nothing. And even at this point, you don't want to see players or teams who can't affect their own standings more than raising up one or two spots mm -hmm. affecting the teams who have a chance of winning the league. That's why we talked about it. there. I, I feel there should be a trade ban once you come to playoff time. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Let's switch gears. One last thing, regular NFL football. 
We talked about this before. Things have switched. Things have, things have changed. Things have switched. Things haven't switched. Who are your predictions for Super Bowl at this point? Dude, honestly, at this point, I still – the Ravens look like the class of the NFL. And I really think it has to do with, A, we all know the Ravens defense is always just a force. But I told you this last, you know, last time, and we talked about this earlier in the year, Lamar Jackson is a game changer. He is the type of talent who can't be game planned for. True. Now, I mean, you're talking about Michael Vick in his prime with a Brady-type arm. Yeah. This is a guy who doesn't want to be a running back and yet is still leading the league in rushing yards by a quarterback and yards per attempt by like four or five yards a carry. That's insane. Yeah. yeah okay? Great. He's unplanable. You can't game plan for a guy who doesn't want to run and yet can still put up 100 yards on you in his sleep. So right now with their defense – the only team that can beat them, in my opinion, is New England because of whatever voodoo and <laughs> panic deals that Brady and Belichick have the made. Be- the, the Belichick freaking deal with Sold the devil. <laughs> whatever it is, they're the only ones who have a shot. But at this point, I really think it's Baltimore's show unless somebody gets really hurt. I mean, Their because defense is phenomenal. Their running backs are solid, and Lamar Jackson is a force of nature. And they put another loss on San Francisco. Like, San Francisco was predicted they were unbeatable for the longest time. They have a great no, offense. No, I mean, no, 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 no. The pundits said they were unbeatable. I told you they were going to win the NFC, and I still believe they probably will. But the truth is, they're a find-a-way-to-win team. No. They're not an elite team yet. That's the truth. They're scrappy. They find a way to win. They've got a good enough defense and a good enough offense. But on their best day, they can't beat the Patriots or Baltimore when Baltimore or the Patriots are playing well. I'm sorry. It isn't going to happen. Doesn't mean they're not a good team. But the truth is, I think Green Bay, New Orleans – have equal shots at taking down San Fran because one off game by them just a little bit. I don't know about Green Bay because that game against Green Bay, that was a hard thing to San watch, Fran man. played, though. Dude, they came to play. Yeah. That was not the same team that showed up a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So, again, on that same week, I think Baltimore on an off week still beats 90% of the teams in the AFC. I don't think San Francisco on their bet on their off week can take any of the top four or five teams. I think Seattle on an off, uh, if, if the Niners have an off week, I think Seattle beats them. I think green Bay beats them. I think new Orleans beats them easily. And I maybe, think that, maybe one or two more teams. And I think that, you know, you're right because I mean, green Bay, they just didn't seem like they were in it. Like the, they were not in it during that game against San Francisco, but San Francisco come had, but but come playoff time, everything changes. All bets are off. And that's when Green Bay shines during the playoffs. It's Except not last that, year because we lost our coach. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Garoppolo. You know I was one of his biggest – I've been blowing the horn for this guy since he went to the Niners. Mm-hmm. I think he's a very good quarterback. And for their system, in Shanahan's system, man, I think he's great. But who would you rather have in the playoffs, Aaron Rodgers or Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah. Now, if you're a homer, I already know your answer. But the truth is, most people, I think, would say Aaron Rodgers. We've seen what he can do. We've seen him in crunch in, cl- in cr- crunch time. Dude, that one, that one play, that one play this year. I mean, it's like every year he has this magical play that comes well, out of the- nowhere – I hate to be this That's way. About side, it. it was a side throw, and it was a one-hand catch. It was insane. I hate to bring this up, but even in that horrific loss to Arizona, hmm. where Larry Fitzgerald made you his bitch. Um, yeah, no. I could tell I that it really hurts. I didn't I, want to bring it up. I, I could tell it really hurts you to bring it up. <laughs> but, dude, look at the plays Aaron Rodgers made in that game. 
Yeah. If it was not for them, it doesn't come down to a last minute. I mean, he made every crucial kill you, cutthroat, ice cold blood in his veins play. The man is a player. I would rather take him over Garoppolo any day. And in the playoffs, when the pressure's on, I would probably bet on Green Bay. And you know what? I mean, again, and it's not me being, you know, you know, a, a, a Packer fan or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. It's the fact of the matter that I've seen Aaron Rodgers play. The guy is an amazing athlete. He can run. He can throw the ball under extreme pressure. And you've seen him do it under all of the most high-pressure situations. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like I said, it's, it's one of those things that I hope, I hope that they make it. I mean, I was even a little bit skeptical at the beginning of the year because of a new coach. But LaFleur has done an amazing job. I'm very happy that he's our coach. He's a young coach, fresh mind. He gets along with Aaron Rodgers. He actually listens to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I think somebody told you this at the beginning of the season. Yes, yes. Well, that's why that's why I call you Mr. Fantasy Football because <laughs> you know all. You, you know, I bow down. I bow down. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, okay? That's why when it comes time for the Super Bowl, I'm going to be like, so, uh, Jeremy, who do you think is going to win? I, I got about 100 bucks right now. <laughs> I'm going to burn in a hole through my pocket. <laughs> Make that 200 plus I win the league. <laughs> Dude, I told you. That Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl, I mean, or um, was it uh, the Ravens Giants Super Bowl? I made so much money on that, it wasn't even funny. The one back in, yeah, was it yeah. the one, early 2000s? That was a, I think that was the one with the lights went out. Yes, I think and they had so. a black one. That, that, that was San Francisco. Oh, that was San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was one of them. No, no, no. The one like five years before that, when Trent Dilfer led the Ravens to the mm. Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I think the Giants were favored by two touchdowns. I was laying odds to every one of my friends at I think I was laying twenty four points, and I I literally cleaned house. Nice. That I, I knew they were going to kill him. I, I'm pretty sure it was 31 points was the final point differential that year. Yeah, I cleaned house, man. I'm not saying I know I, I can't make a living as a better. Nobody can, you know. But the fact is, I love this game, and it's a lot of fun. And every so often, more often than not, I'm pretty right. I, I, I'm glad you got Aaron Jones. I'm glad you listened to me and drafted him this year. Oh, yeah. I told you again that he was going to be top notch. I gotta, I gotta give some love to my boy, Josh Jacobs, man in Oakland. Uh, we just found out today it's been released on the injury report. He's been playing with a fractured shoulder since week seven. Wow. He's a trooper. The, the man has been on injured reserve every practice week as questionable and is still shoot, suited up is still on pace, I believe, for 1,400 yards rushing as a rookie. That's a player. And he's been doing it with a fractured shoulder since week seven. That's so, a dude, love to Josh Jacobs. That kid is amazing. I, You know me, I'm not a Raiders fan in any way, shape, or form. But, dude, that kid came to play this year, and I am really, really excited to see what he does in fantasy seasons like, coming up. Man, I got to tell you, Jeremy, you know, I, I, you know, it's, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the Xander Effect. Thank you, brother. Hopefully, hopefully, Super Bowl, I think that you and I should actually go watch it somewhere and then comment on it, have a little sit-down live, one-on-one -on -one interview, you, you know, and talk about what's going to happen, have a pre-game show, you know, and then have a post-game show as to what our predictions are for the Super Bowl. Who's going to win? Who's going to get that Lombardi trophy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, arrogant prick. Oh, no, right. Asshole. Sorry. Asshole, yeah. There's, you're the prick. I'm the asshole. <laughs> Anyways, but Jeremy, I love you, man. Thank you so much for being on the Xander Effect. Your Absolutely. wisdom, love the wisdom you share with us all the time on fantasy football, man. And I'll see you in the playoffs. I'll be there, brother. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Later, man.
Thanks a lot, Jeremy, for being on this special episode of The Xander Effect. I look forward to having you again on the show as always. And thank you all for joining me on this episode as well. Stay tuned for Saturday at noon for the for my regular episode of The Xander Effect. I interview hip-hop artist Jason, and I also interview the rock band The Pond Hawks. It's, it's, they're both amazing interviews, both amazing artists and bands, and I look forward forward for you to watching the show plus of course everything this week in entertainment sports and video games so stay tuned saturday at noon i'll see you then Thanks a lot for watching this episode of the Xander Effect. Now, if you like this video or any of my other videos, here's a couple right here. See, They're right here, They're right here. Go ahead and click on those to view some of my past videos and make sure to subscribe because it's awesome. See you next time on the Xander Effect. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram.